Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Uncorked with Funny Wine Girl. This is Funny Wine Girl, aka Janine Luby. And uh, it's August and I've been doing kind of a uh, education or school related theme. Some great uh, conversations. Of course, I you probably think I say that all the time, but I am just so uh, proud and privileged to know so many different women and women that I'm just getting to know in some cases introduced to me that I love uh, the conversations and the knowledge they have, the experiences they have, and anything that can help to inform and inspire you. And of course, have some laughs along the way. So a couple of weeks ago, I spoke with Dr. Leonard. We're talking about, you know, getting more women in predominantly male trades and fields. Uh, That was a great conversation. I hope you'll listen if you haven't. And then last week was a really kind of heavy topic, excuse me, talking about school safety and school shootings with Amy Archer, who co-edited a book about survivors, you know, families who might've lost a child in a school shooting. And it's a heavy topic, but at the same time, it's an important conversation. So I hope you'll check that out. It's a, it's not all gloom and doom. We, we shared some, some laughs and some ideas and some hope for the future with the younger generation. Uh, so today following in that, that theme, um, we're going to continue talking education. And uh, my guest today is Valerie Sarah. And as I often do, if you if you do listen, and if not, I'll tell you now, I like to talk a little bit first about how I know the guest. Um, in some cases, I've only had a few cases where maybe I've never met the person in person, uh, or I'm, it's the first time I'm talking to them. That's rare. But I just like to kind of give us a little reminder that it's so great to be open to meeting different people and to not closing doors, right? And to remembering like, oh, I met that person before. You never, ever know how they're going to show up in your life again. And how you might be able to help one another. So Valerie, and also I'll share my little skepticism and and a lesson for you guys out there. Valerie uh, had seen me on LinkedIn. I had been posting about some work I did at King's College with my students and she sent me a message. And of course my skeptical Janine and cynical Janine at first was like, what's she trying to sell me? And that was initially my first thought. Uh, Valerie has a company called Lesson Alive and we'll talk more about that in a couple of minutes. But when I first received her email, I was instantly, my back was up like, okay, what is she trying to sell me? Because there are a lot of folks on LinkedIn who use it that way to do like a hard sell, like right away, like, Hey, let's get coffee. You want to buy insurance? So I was instantly like skeptical, but turns out it was more of a collaboration. I met with Valerie in person and that was, you know, back before the pandemic. And then we ended up doing some work together. I am one of uh, the experts, quote unquote, um, on uh, education, uh, on Lesson Alive, excuse me, Lesson Alive, where you can go check that out, lessonalive.com. All kinds of experts who can bring value to the classroom for your classroom. So I was able to work with Valerie, and I've known her now for a couple of years, and uh, it's it's been a really cool experience to contribute to what she's doing. And I'm really excited to hear where she's going with that, especially the post pandemic. So after all that talking, now I would like to say welcome, Valerie, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Janine. I am so excited to be here. I am thrilled to be um, part of your August programming with with the other talent that you've mentioned, um, Amy Archer and, and Dr. Leonard. I've had the privilege to um, meet both of those ladies and work with them. And actually, um, Amy's actually a, a speaker for Lesson Alive as well. I didn't know if you if you knew that connection or not. And um, had the privilege to work with Dr. Leonard in, in a couple of different programs that we've done um, over the last few years. So um, an impressive roster of, of ladies you have coming in. And I don't know what your quote unquote expert comment was, because you are certainly an expert in your field. And we're proud to have you as a part of our um, Lesson Alive platform. So I just thought I'd thought I'd give you a little push there. Um, there's Thank certainly you. no quote unquote around your ex. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that, you know what that I, you know, turned 50, I'll be 51 in less than a month and I'm still working through. I will say for me, I feel, you know, women tend to underplay their value. And so for me, I see that and I say it for me and my, you know, Catholic guilt and I apologize and I underestimate and I'm not, you know, but thank you for that. And I should have never said that because I do feel like I don't like to use that word expert because I don't feel like that. And when I get struggles and kind of like, uh, not pushback, but like feeling undervalued, I start to do it myself. So thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, I pick up on that with other women and I try to, you know, give them a little nudge because we're all we're all guilty of it. Um, and, and men as well. I mean, it's certainly not, you know, there's many of us guilty of taking a, um, 
a compliment or right positioning ourselves as experts but um but i thought i'd get a give you a little nudge there so um but no thank you so much for for having me on i'm, I'm really excited to be here and i'm excited for the the many different layers of our partnership that we've had over the years and um and just being able to participate here with you today. So thanks Great. for having me. Thank you. Well, before we get into the the business side of things, the lesson alive, I'd love for you to share a little bit with my listeners, a little bit about you. Now, I mean, we hadn't known each other until the connection on LinkedIn, a little bit, maybe about your background, what led you to the business. And then of course, a little fun, little personal stuff. And, and if you like wine, what kind you drink? So start wherever you want to start the fun stuff or whatever. I feel like I need to start with the last question. Of course I drink wine. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I never want to assume. Are there people who don't drink wine? Now, of course I drink wine. I'm typically a cab drinker, although in the summer, sometimes I'll go with a chilled, you know, something chilled. So you might catch me, you know, with a really good rosé. It's got to be dry, a little bit dry, you know, which I know is a little bit of a, you know, conundrum. Um, but uh, yeah, typically I'm a cab drinker and um, I do like a sparkling wine from time to time. Okay, good. Yeah. The reds for me are more winter, but, um, you know, I'd, I'd rather get into those cause there's less sugar, but maybe one of these days. <laughs> right. 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 Um, well, so now that the important stuff is, is out of the way, um, <laughs> So who, who is Valerie Sarah? So gosh, what a, what a loaded question when you ask somebody who's, you know, been around a few decades, just like yourself, I'm right there with you. Um, so, you know, I'd like to start with, I'm, I'm a mom. Um, I have two boys. I'm about to be the mom of two teenagers because my youngest son will turn 13 tomorrow. Oh so, um, so busy house with, um, you know, all that, that comes with that territory. And um, I am married as of just a couple of days ago, 24 years. Oh, to... congratulations. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, just had an anniversary, a big, big week in our house, anniversaries and birthdays and, and back to school events. So uh, it's, it's a busy, busy time right now, but um, married 25 years to, um, to Steve and Sarah, who happens to, um, you know, also be my business partner, which is, which is interesting. And that could be a whole podcast in and of itself someday, Janine. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I was just going to say that's got to have a really, it's got to be interesting on uh, like pluses and minuses, right? Or that's opportunities right. for what do we call them now? What's the right way to say it? <laughs> yeah, opportunities. There you go. Um, but, um, you know, he actually is the one who had the idea for our business. You know, I come from professionally background of accounting, um, business management, project management, technology. And spent many years in, you know, working in, in corporate America and, you know, the big accounting firms and um, healthcare. And my husband um, happens to be a professional BMX bike rider. I'll pause. Yes, that's what he does for a living. <laughs> That is, but we really do have to acknowledge that because you don't run into people many times when you're out and about, oh yeah, BMX, what? Like that, I remember when you told me, I'm like, huh, like yeah. that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And, um, you know, that, in, that has always inspired me to stay focused on, you know, making sure I followed his leadership in following your dreams. You know, he has always been passionate about, you can you know, you can do what you love um, along the way of, you know, your profession and finding the balance of that. And Lesson Alive is really founded in many parts on that. Partially, um, it's, you know, the inspiration that comes with people who do that, who really are passionate about what they do in their life and their professional careers and become experts in their fields um, and, and whatever that is, BMX, communications, right? Accounting, like, you know, that runs the gamut and everybody's different and, and how we pursue things are different, but just pursuing them with passion um, is, is really, you know, something that's just a big part of, of you know, our foundation. But, you know, as a BMX bike rider, the other thing that he's had an opportunity to do is do a lot of public speaking because by default, you know, he has, you know, been invited over many years to um, speak and inspire people, you know, sh show your BMX tricks, but also talk about, you know, who you are in your journey. People are interested, right? They're a lot more interested in a BMX bike rider than they are an accountant. I can tell get you, out of here, Valerie. I tell you that. <laughs> oh, so, I'm sorry, you know, but I agree. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. So, um, so, you know, 
what that has meant is he many years ago started a school assembly business for himself, just speaking to students to inspire them on, on many different levels and talking about really important things from health and fitness to bullying and using his personal journey um, along the way to, to encourage and inspire students. And, um, you know, while I came up, you know, professionally alongside him in my business background, at one point we looked at each other and said, gosh, every time you do a school assembly, you know, somebody in that program, you know, the principal, a, a teacher, a parent says, that was awesome. Um, we really appreciate, you know, that connection of you, this, this person who, you know, sits outside of the day-to-day -day life of these kids to come in and talk to them about something in a way that maybe they hadn't heard it before, or maybe they had heard it before, but they're listening differently because it's coming from you. And so, you know, with that feedback, we would always get requests of, you know, do you know of other speakers like you? You know, we love to bring these kinds of conversations to our kids. Who else do you know that can, you know, come in and, and talk to our students and inspire them, you know, academically, emotionally, career exploration wise? And so we we really said after several years of thinking about it, there's something here, right? There's a there's a population of educators who feel passionate about bringing outside connections into their students in a way that maybe isn't as easy through just their community. There's always a parent who raises their hand and said, I'll come in and, you know, do Dr. Seuss day, right? I'll come in and talk about my career. But not every community has all of the different types of people that we want our kids to meet, right? Not every community has a BMX bike rider or an astronaut or, you know, a physicist that can come into the classroom. And, um, and so that's what, that's sort of how I know you asked, who am I? And I kind of moved into who is my business because I, I, I wanted you to kind of hear the connection of how, you know, my husband and I, you know, coming from different personal and professional backgrounds have come together into the idea of the platform and give you an, a little bit of, you know, precursor into where Lesson Alive came from. Would you say that, cause I know before you were in more or less the, when I met you, I think you had told me you left the more or less the healthcare space, uh, so to speak, the corporate world. Would you say that you, what your husband does and how he had been doing it was, was your, I think you said that your inspiration to say, I'm going to leave this. And I'm sure it was good. Obviously there are benefits to having that job. And I know, cause I worked at blue cross for 11 years. There are, I, I would never look back and say it wasn't worthwhile, but then to say, okay, now it's time for me to to do something that I'm passionate, really passionate about. Yeah. And, you know, um, the, the timing was right when I first made that leap from, you know, hopping out of the corporate world and into launching Lesson Alive. But I'm certainly not out of that world either. You know, I, 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 I play in both spaces all the time. And, um, you know, one of the things we did with Lesson Alive is we established the platform to almost self-operate right? The relationship is between the educator and the expert, and we're just the platform that allows that engagement to happen. So because our business case was always founded on that, I actually do a lot of different things in my professional career, including, you know, managing and, and supporting Lesson Alive. But it, it doesn't require day-to-day -day attention from me because it's a marketplace. And I help facilitate sometimes the conversations between the educator who's looking for an expert to come into their classroom or come into their school um, and that expert. But, um, you know, day-to-day, -day, those, those connections happen organically. Um, and, and that was always the idea behind our, our platform. And that's great because people get like, you know, a teacher or, you know, a principal or whoever can, can browse, can look on your website, can look at the different offerings, the different experts. And I have to say, you know, I know, of course I'm on there and I offer, you know, communications, you know, comedy writing and, and anti-bullying, but you have such a breadth of, of, uh, topics and experts. I mean, you pretty much can find anyone on there to talk about such any, and even career, like you said, career exploration. I know there's a lot of opportunities for uh, speakers to tell a class about, Hey, this is what this profession looks like. And, and here's my background and here's what, it, you know, you'd have to do. And here's some of my experiences, which I think is great. Kids need to hear more than just what's in a textbook or a curriculum. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've gone by that, that old sort of um, what has become a very popular tagline of, you know, you can't be what you can't see. 
not our tagline, right? But um, but I, I like to remind people that it, that it's so true, and we hear that from our educators and our students after they've had some of these sessions. You know, just being exposed to different people, whether they were, you know, the speaker was brought in to speak to a classroom about a specific topic, or whether they came to talk about their career. Kids are inspired by seeing and being introduced to things that they just don't see in their daily life, or they don't pay attention to, as I said, because sometimes you know, hey, I can, you know, tell my kids all day long about all the career opportunities they have out there. But when they meet somebody who's doing it, right, who's passionate about it, totally changes the game. So career exploration is definitely a space where we've spent a lot of time the last couple of years really specializing and um, in many cases developing programs with districts who want to have certain types of programs over the course of the year to expose their students to different types of careers and working with our experts to um, you know, put together programs. We, we do, um, I did, you know, I spoke a little bit about the platform sort of being a, a one-stop sort of you know, self-help shop, but in reality, we do do a lot of um, work with the districts to help customize programs for them. And, and we'll work as an intermediary with our, with our experts to say, hey, we, you are an expert in this, the program you're offering, you know, might suggest that you have a, a certain skill that you're providing to that student base, but they're looking for something slightly different. Does this still resonate with you? And is this something you can bring to the table? Um, and we work with our, our community all the time to tailor programs specific to schools for something that they need. And that's both academic oriented programs and behavioral um, programs in, in, in many cases. So a great content. And I could say um, for those folks, you're still, I would imagine, still accepting or if someone wants to be an expert, um, they can go to your website and and explore and check it out. And I know as someone who does use it, it's it's easy to use, um, you know, and you can upload, you know, your, your picture and all kinds of information and, and what you're about and create uh, what you what would be a nice offering or what you think. And of course, reach out to you to say, hey, does this seem like something schools might be interested in? Yeah, and and thank you for that. Um, I appreciate the the feedback on um, the ease of use, and and maybe it's a good time to you know just take a minute and explain. I don't. I maybe we kind of jumped into um, talking a little bit about the content. Maybe I could just take a minute to explain the platform. Oh yes. Um, and and what and that'll help the listeners with a little bit more context. But it is definitely a self help platform, and the intention is for experts to put profiles into lessonalive.com with different programs that they're up for offering to schools, to community organizations like Girl Scout troops, as as Janine knows, um, into, you know, in some cases, church groups, and in some cases, higher education. Um, But listing, you know, a roster of different types of programs or speaking engagements that, you know, they, as an expert in a certain field would like to bring into a classroom. And you'll see everything from, um, you know, like I said, behavioral types of programs and career exploration programs, as well as very academic oriented programs. In some cases, you know, we have, you know, authors, we have scientists, we have, you know, everything in between. And um, the idea is the expert loads a profile on a roster of these, these different programs, and they might be, you know, in-person school assembly, they might be a virtual um, program, it could be either um, or both, and it could be different subject areas that you as an expert you know, have expertise in and have interest in and want to speak to students about. And then the educators, community organizations, whoever might be looking for something like that for their um, various audiences can come out and explore the catalog. And there's lots of easy ways to search if you're trying to find a scientist, you know, there's there's categories. If you're looking for a career exploration, you know, there's categories. So you can really sort of um, easily refine the search down to a roster of experts. And then you can directly reach out to that expert or you can communicate with us through, you know, through our corporate channels at Lesson Alive um, for, for the booking. And, um, you know, our intention is to make it very easy for both parties to come in, make a profile. There's no cost to be a part of the platform whatsoever. Um, it's, it's free for an expert to have a profile with us. It's free for an educator to have an account with us, um, that there's no cost to that. And, you know, the only transaction is when, you know, the actual 
educator books this the speaking engagement and um and then that's when the you know transaction happens but otherwise it's free to be on our platform and um all the support you need and all the advice to you know tailor programs that are of interest so um it, you know that's basically how we operate it's a pretty simple model it's just like a marketplace where you would you know look for other services or even products you know think of you know it's amazon for for uh, speaking engagements for education, um, to educational environments. That's a good way to put it. Cause who is not, who is not familiar with Amazon, right? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I am highly dependent. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even though I say, oh, I should, I don't even know if I need this, but like ordering my coffee because I can't find the flavor I like in the stores. I mean, we all find something we need quote unquote need on there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And it's here tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of us use that during the pandemic. So I'm going to transition and ask you if you don't mind. Um, before, like when I met you, you know, the opportunity for speakers, you could uh, offer an in-person program. And I know your husband's done a lot of those, you know, and you could, you know, a school might say, okay, we're in New Jersey, you know, you come to us or whatever. And, and you could offer online, but with the pandemic, things definitely change. So do you want to talk a little bit about what that meant for you guys at Lesson Alive, um, because I know myself, I did a couple online things with you during that time frame, and then well, I'd like to hear like what your future plans are now. So, how did things change for you, for you guys then? So, there's nothing like launching an education business in the middle of a pandemic, where the education industry is <laughs> turned upside down in every which way, and you don't even have yourself established yet, right? So that's what happened with us at Lesson Alive. And it's so interesting because at the launch of our business, we thought we were going to spend a couple of years trying to convince educators that they can do online programs, that it was easy for them to connect to a virtual speaker anywhere because it expanded that population so much, right? I no longer just have to visit have visitors who can drive here. Um, but now I can connect, you know, Janine Luby to a school in Texas because they're really interested in her program and it's super affordable and it's win-win for everyone. So we thought we were going to spend a lot of time convincing educators that, you know, online programs were the way of the future. And we had our business case established where, you know, in-person programs were going to be our bread and butter for a couple of years while we did this convincing of educators and made the platform really easy to use and, you know, made it, you know, synchronous with Google and, you know, all those great things we spent all this time and effort on. And then a pandemic hit and amen, every educator went online and became virtual. And it changed everything for us because we, our whole model changed, right? Our bread and butter that was going to take us through the next couple of years, our, our in-person assemblies, which was really where we came from now couldn't be done, but all of a sudden everybody needed virtual programs because they, right? So we had to switch really fast. We were lucky because we had the platform ready to do it. We were ahead of that curve. Um, but we all of a sudden had to convince a lot of our experts who intended to only be in person, <clears throat> my husband being one of them, that we can do virtual school assemblies, not just one-on-one -on -one with a classroom. I mean, everyone kind of bought into that, right? A small group, one educator on the other end speaking about a very specialized topic for that academic group. But your full-scale school assembly where you'd bring in a speaker like a BMX bike rider, bring everybody into the gym and, and, and have a program, we all of a sudden had to transition those programs into virtual programs. And we did it. Um, we did it really fast, but um, thank you to Zoom, who <laughs> kept up with all of the requirements of these platforms all of those months and made it really easy. Um, and honestly, it took, it, it really transitioned our business case completely, turned it on its head. Um, I know I'm not the only one that's the case for in the middle of a pandemic, but, um, but it accelerated our online learning and it really helped our educators realize, hey, these virtual platforms are not challenging to use. They're easy to connect with. And wow, I actually can connect anywhere in the world with one cl click of a Zoom link. Amazing. So it, it really transformed um, what was our five-year business plan um, into a, a totally different look at, um, at the, the, you know, what was ahead. We are now going into this school year, 
finally getting back to consistent in-person programs too. Okay. So we're now seeing a switch back where, okay, you know, virtual has been awesome and now we get it, right? We can do any type of program online, including all full school assemblies with, you know, a thousand kids clicked into Zoom or, you know, on a whiteboard in their classroom. Um, but a lot of the schools are now turning back and saying, okay, loved that program, would love you guys to come back and, and do, you know, your in-person program for our students. And so now we're really focused on, this is the first school year um, in, in the last two that we are, you know, sort of refocused on, on that market and bringing back our in-person assemblies alongside fully, you know, our virtual catalog and promoting that just as much as we had. Um, but a little extra emphasis on, on you know, let's get back to some in-person um, activities here. So that, that's how we're pivoting a little bit for this school year. And it's, it's not different um, in, in terms of what we anticipated um, when we were looking forward, you know, three years ago. Um, but there's certainly a difference in how we have to market and communicate um, because now we're reteaching people about in-person assemblies. Never thought we'd be there. <laughs> Never thought we'd be there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just, I would imagine like, so for your husband with BMX, I mean, I'm sure obviously you could, tra you, you can transition anything online, but with something like that, like having him in person is probably really cool because you're seeing him. And even with a lot of, you know, presenters who might want to engage a little bit more hands-on and that's where online could be challenging. But at the same time with the online, you could get someone that maybe you, the school can't afford to bring them across the country or even across the world. And you can't beat the fact that you can just do that using technology, which is great. Exactly. You know, for the most part, schools, you know, most of them budget for, for speakers, um, right? A lot of PTA associations, administrative offices, think about those kinds of things, especially for your larger school assemblies where you, you know, you do bring a speaker in and you want to, them to be in person. But um, I will say that being able to connect a school to someone they otherwise could never have brought in different world away, different time zone, um, just couldn't possibly afford the travel expenses of a speaker, really totally changed the game here with, with um, being able to connect these, these classrooms and these schools into so many other types of people, um, other experts in their field or motivational speakers. So it absolutely, you know, broadens that horizon and you know, as we're going into the school year and with a renewed focus on in-person assemblies, not exclusively by any means, um, you know, we are also seeing our finally, I will say after the last couple of years here of, of what's been really chaos in the K through 12 community, right? I mean, I think any educator would mm -hmm. say that it's been a really challenging time in, in the education industry. Um, I do think we're going into a new school year with a fresh perspective. And I hear this from a lot of educators that we speak with that like, you know, a lot of that chaos is now behind them. We do have a new way of working and that's a good thing. You know, what we're doing now actually was might have been prompted in some ways by the pandemic, but it was coming eventually. And we just accelerated a lot of these opportunities because we had no choice. And so, you know, we're back to reemphasizing, OK, you know, everybody's sort of reorganized, refreshed. Right. It's been a hard couple of years, but going into the school year, we're reminding everyone about, you know, we can kind of get back to what was our main goal here, inspiring the students. Everybody's been very focused on, you know, administration and catching up and obviously health and safety, right? All those things were critical at the time of the last couple of years. Now refocusing on, let's get back to the students. Let's get back to, yeah, we've been educating them. We've been doing a great job and it was hard. Now let's take it up a notch. Let's get back to, you know, inspiring them. Let's get back to making them excited about coming in. Let's, you know, hopefully we can stop talking about all the administrative stuff and the health and safety stuff. Those just become normal now. And now we can, you know, bring some of that excitement back that the educators want to bring to the students. Um, and we just hope we can do that for them. You know, we, that is what we want to do. We want to help the educators elevate what they're teaching in their classrooms and in their schools by 
connecting them to experts, motivational speakers, academic experts, professionals in their field um, to just, you know, bring their lesson alive. That was yeah. always our, our motivator. And we hope that we can help inspire educators to inspire their students in a different way by connecting them to this, you know, these real world professionals. Instead of just reading about it in a book or watching a video on YouTube, those are great all great mediums. But how about when you meet somebody, you know, the um, education field has done a lot of research in this space. And um, time and time again, you'll see the studies show that when students meet somebody who does what they're learning about, gives them a totally different level of engagement and learning. And I know we can't do that all the time. We can't have a guest speaker teach every lesson in our classroom um, or every, you know, behavioral motivational lesson, in, you know, in the school. But if we can do that a few times a year for students, it really gets them thinking in a totally different way. And there's there's so much research on it. So we're just hoping everybody can get back to thinking about that and, and thinking about, you know, bringing their lessons up a level. Um, and this is one one way to do it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's no question that's of great value, but I was going to, and you kind of addressed it. So the past couple of years, a lot of the teachers are ba barely just trying to keep their heads above water. I yeah. mean, it's been a challenge just to get the kids. And I think in many cases, it obviously it varies greatly, I would say, based on the school district and leadership and a variety of things. Um, but how much of a challenge do you think is still left where, you know, you're seeing in some places where they're actually having teacher shortages, um, which is, it's, it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's, we're in a very different place now in life where it's like so many shortages of different people in the different areas workforce. But I know I saw on the news a couple of weeks ago, I forget where it was. They were offering like sign on bonuses, which honestly the bonuses were not that great uh, of an incentive in my opinion, but how much of a challenge do you see that being as you continue and how would you, uh, is there a plan or you're obviously thinking about how you would address that or overcome that? Because in many cases, some of the schools are probably just thinking, how can we teach them the basics, right. you know, and this might be something like, you know, I don't have time for that or whatever. Uh, even though it would be of great value to the students. So I, 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 number one, it is a, it's a crisis, right? There is a teacher shortage that in, in many school districts across our country is literally a crisis. Um, some of them are, you know, 10 and 20% short on staff and starting the school year out without a full staff. And um, I think we're seeing what is sort of the next big pivot in, in education. And that is, they're starting to look at who can be an educator, right? What does it mean to be an educator? Does it require a four-year degree? A lot of school districts are starting to hire people who don't have specific degrees in education and they're giving them the skills. You know, they might have business degrees, science degrees, and, 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 and in some cases they don't have degrees. They come from some other type of background, right? And while this is happening because of crisis, because of the shortage, these programs are putting in place to train teachers to be educators are going to be really fundamentally change the industry in so many ways, because you're going to start to see people from various backgrounds pivot into education without that four year degree. And so I think we're kind of at the next pivot here. And it's very interesting to us because our premise has always been people with expertise in their field, right, with skills with training to be an educator can add so much value to a classroom, right? Because they have real world experience. They're teaching the kids, you know, what they've actually done, you know, in some cases that might be in the hands-on area. In some cases, you know, we'll take you for example, in, in communications, right? You know, teaching a high school class when you, you know, not a career educator, right? But instead, bringing your career and in education into the classroom. Now you, of course, is a little unique because you actually do have professional education experience, um, but most people don't. But, but training them to have some educational skills to be able to, you know, write curriculum in a way that, you know, isn't just, you know, that's maybe more formal meets needs of the students and the state um, requirements. Those are skills that can be taught. And so I, I think it's really interesting because, you know, there's two opportunities that we see. Number one, we agree with the business case that you can take a working professional and have them teach what they know. If they have a passion to educate others, give them some additional training 
they can make excellent educators and especially specifically in their field. Heck, that's the college model, right? I mean, all the time yep. our, our universities are taking those working professionals and turning them into educators. Why can't we do that in, in K through 12, especially in high school and middle school where you're getting into specialty classes? But you can also see another advantage to a program like we have, right, where you're bringing in educational where you're bringing in experts who can drop into an educational environment and offer expertise because you might start to see onboarding of educators who don't have an expertise in an area, but they need them to fill a void in a classroom, right? Because I, I literally don't have enough teachers in, let's use civics, for example, random example, right? So now you're bringing somebody in who maybe has some experience um, in education, maybe an associate's degree in some cases. A lot of these people don't even have bachelor's degrees now that they're starting to bring in or, or they're a business professional. And they say, look, I need you to fill this gap. I need you to be a civics teacher, right? For this school year. This is what's happening right now. And, you know, how great is it that that individual can come out to a platform like Lesson Alive and say, hey, you know, I'm no expert in this field, but boy, would my kids love to hear from a politician about, you know, the, the election um, process and, and learn directly from somebody who's living that, who's, who's doing that day to day and help supplement their curriculum in a way where, yes, you know, maybe I don't have all of that expertise and background. I'm going to teach you. Some of it's going to be, you know, using all of the great materials available to me, but I'm also going to make sure you meet somebody who does this every day to amp up that level of education that maybe I'm missing because, you know, I've, I've kind of been dropped into the subject matter, not my expertise, not my background. I'm going to do the best I can. And this is one way I'm going to do it. So I know that's a lot of stuff. I can gave you two really big, <laughs> really <laughs> big paths there. But I mean, that's what we're talking about now and what we're seeing and, and the conversations we're having with um, our educators and our experts. And it, well, it sounds like, um, so really it's a, and a good opportunity, a great opportunity for the future as far as for Lesson Alive, because um, you can, like you just gave the great example, like help fill in areas and, and not only your mission of like bringing lessons alive, but where there might be shortages or, you know, it's like, okay, well, here's a great program that will benefit the kids. And we didn't have someone who is as knowledgeable as this other speaker. So it's, it's, it's a, I, I think it'll be a great asset for the schools going forward. Yeah. And like it, Picture, you know, yourself, right? Let's just say they drop you into a, in a, into a classroom and they're asked, one of the things on your curriculum to teach is um, taxes, right? Let's say I have a junior class and I'm supposed to teach personal income tax. You, the educator, might not even do your own taxes, right? And you're like, oh gosh, you know, I've got to teach these kids about personal income tax. This is like my worst nightmare. I don't even do my own taxes, right? And, and this is an example we hear a lot. So I'm, I'm using it because it's, it's very relatable to so many people who fear taxes. <clears throat> I'm an accountant, so I don't, but I'm just like to use this example. Um, so how cool is it as an educator, you don't have to panic, right? Instead, you can pull up one of the experts who does this and say, hey, I would really love for you to teach the lesson on personal income taxes, right? Me, the educator, you, the expert, partner up, probably a couple of messages back and forth about, you know, what the needs of, of that specific, you know, topic are according to, you know, the requirements of the classroom. You know, here's the grade level, here's the objective. You know, can you do this for me? I guarantee you there isn't a, you know, one of our experts in our catalog who don't want to partner and say, absolutely, would love to do that you know, and, and, and just, you know, be that guest lecturer for the day. Again, universities do this all the time, all the time. I don't know why our K through 12, you know, industry hasn't embraced that more, but I think the time is ripe for it. And I think both the online pivot, as well as this pivot to, you know, looking more broadly at who can educate our students and how they do that are both going to sort of spark this model to, to start to be a little bit more popular. And, um, you know, I'll add one more thing. 
we've spent a lot of time interviewing educators about what kinds of programs, you know, where, where are the areas that you really think, you know, would amp up engagement in a classroom. And, and we do work with some of our experts to really tailor programs to things we're hearing from our educators. And um, one thing, you know, that on occasion we've heard in these interviews with educators is a little bit of hesitation about giving up that educational process, right? Either because dare I say they feel a little threatened, right? I don't think somebody else can educate better than I, I'm the teacher and it's my classroom. Um, or, you know, maybe even, you know, from the perspective of, hey, if I open this gate, are people gonna think that, you know, other people can, can do this better than me, the educator? This is, right? Yeah. Um, and, and on the other arm, you know, we see the hesitation of like, oh, it's a lot of work, right? I've spent too much time getting this expert to know enough about my classroom to, to do this. Both of those things, you know, we have, we try to combat all the time. Um, and, and those are probably our two biggest challenges working with educators. And we're always trying to inform and educate our educators about, you know, how not, why not to think that way. Um, and that's probably our biggest hurdle as we sort of, you know, take on, you know, and, and reach out to new educators and introduce our platform is to do that in a sensitive way. Um, but to really reinforce that, you know, we're here to bring you partners and we're here to support and, and you and ramp up the engagement of the students in your classroom. And, and we have lots of evidence that proves that to be true, um, that, you know, we're just going to add value. And so, um, that's probably our biggest hurdle as, yeah. as, as we go in and, and work with our educators. When I taught, and you mentioned, I, well, my experience is in higher ed. So I taught in college uh, part-time for seven years. I used to love to bring in guest speakers. I would usually try to do at least two a semester because they could bring something that, I mean, granted, my, I'm teaching communications and my background is communications. But I also, I don't do everything in communication. So I'd love to, I, you know, I would bring in different people from the community to talk about their, whether they were, you know, in a newspaper or radio or a former uh, graduate of King's College who went on. And I had the one woman who went on to be like a sports uh, caster, you know, and just, just for them to hear the other people's stories, because right. especially if they were younger than me, <laughs> because I felt they're a little more relatable when they're closer in age to the students, but I found incredible value, um, from guest speakers. I, I thought that was invaluable, truly. And I'm sure your students, you know, if you asked your, and I'm sure you did ask your students and, you know, surveys and data shows students across the board say that every time, even in areas where they like might not have been something they thought they were interested in, totally different interest in that, in that day, in that lesson, in that classroom, when there's a guest speaker, um, you know, and at K through 12 and even in higher ed. The, the second value to that engagement is also going all the way back to career exploration, hearing from people who do different things in life, right? I mean, you start putting, like we have a, a son, I mentioned he's a junior in, um, in high school and starting to go down that path of, you know, college search. And it's hard to search for a college unless you're looking forward another four years beyond college and saying, what do, what do I think I want to do after college, right? Because you have to pick a college based on a, a um major and your major should be based on what you want to do at right so you're not you're not asking a kid to just pick a college you're asking a kid to look forward into their life and say where do I think I want to start my career and if these kids aren't exposed to different people who do different things they don't even have a clue of the opportunities out there for them or how to think about college and you don't always have to do it in a way where someone comes in and talks about their career they can come in and offer a lesson and all of a sudden you're like, wow, you know, that person does that, right? Um, and you've got double, you've got double bonus there. You've had a, you know, an introduction to somebody who does something that they don't know about and they've had an increased engagement on that specific academic lesson that day. And um, that value add to me is, you know, even one, one level up beyond just the engagement in the classroom. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, that's, those were all the questions I had for you, Valerie, but I want to, I always like to ask my guests, was there anything that you would like to add or, um, you, you know, you thought we talked about and we didn't anything, this is an opportunity just to, to add something, whether it's about the future of education or the future of lesson alive, anything you wanted to add. 
So I think I, you know, gave a little insight into what we're thinking in terms of how we see the next couple of years coming through. Um, so I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share share my thoughts there in the direction we're headed. But, you know, I think you you cited very well, you know, our continued focus on providing you know, a large catalog of really great experts who want to engage, right? They're, these people are are volunteering their time and effort to engage with classrooms. And I say volunteers, most are paid, but I'm just saying like, they're people who want to engage with students, right? And so that's a special person who puts themselves out there and says, I can do this. Um, I can engage at these different levels. And so you know, I just encourage people to think about, you know, if this is something they can do and something they can offer, because, you know, that connection um, is so valuable to the future, you know, uh, of our students, of of our country, right, of, of our, you know, yes. all of that, right? So I do really encourage people to think about if it's a program that they maybe want to share their expertise, and their expertise can be, as I said, academic and sort of professional skilled or even emotional behavioral topics, right? Experiences in life and sharing those things with students in different ways. Um, but I, I, you know, sort of a message out to our educators out there, you know, we're here to partner. And, you know, there's nothing we love more than someone reaching out directly to us and saying, hey, we're thinking this, right? We're thinking that we want to bring these kinds of things to our students and these experiences this year. Don't be afraid to reach out um, to us because we work with our educators to tailor programs, to customize things for, for districts, for classrooms all the time. And, um, you know, that is the best win-win. And so, you know, we really hope that people will reach out to us um, both educators and experts and, and, you know, come forward with their ideas and just think a little differently, um, you know, about that K through 12 market in particular and how we're educating them and exposing them to, um, to different individuals, different people with experiences outside of what they see every day or what they can be exposed to in their own school or community. Yeah. And uh, um, I did want to wrap up, but I do want to add to what you just said. I was at a uh, tech bridge, um, had an education innovation was the theme of their innovation conference this year. It happened yesterday and they had a panel of um, folks, presidents from colleges. And it was an inch, really interesting conversation about how things have changed for them and how the pandemic has accelerated because, you know, with fewer people, uh, the, the enrollments are down in many schools and it's an interesting time and they have to shift. Uh, but one of the pieces of the conversation was getting uh, people, uh, the students in K through 12 to start to look at what they're learning and maybe needing to, to make some tweaks there so that they are college ready. And I think you referenced it pretty well with your son. It's, it's not just, you know, they're getting, getting there and then it's like, okay, how do I do this? What do I do? And, and just the practical stuff, but then seeing beyond, and, and that's a lot to think about. So anytime you can infuse that in the K through 12, I think would only benefit the kids for their future. Yeah. And you make a great point about college ready um, that that is something that we've had a lot of focus on and worked with several schools to create programs that go beyond getting them ready, like making sure they have their core requirements into even the the social and emotional change of of college. And, you know, you'd be stunned at the statistics of how many counselors are to students in, in a school districts across the United States. They, they most schools offer less than one hour of one on one counseling time a year for a student. And so, you know, one of the other things that we really like to do is partner with our colleges and universities to try to bring programs down into the school districts to help support those counselors who can't do all of what they would like to do one-on-one, -on -one, but we can at least support them with, you know, providing other types of programming that get them ready for, for looking at higher ed opportunities. Um, and that's both academic and and um, and social emotional readiness. So um, a really important area. And um, I know that those those conferences are those a lot of those speakers are available online. So thanks for the tip. I'm going to have to go out and check out the uh, the recording of, of that session because I think we could probably learn something and help uh, connect some dots there. So thanks yeah. for the tip. Sure that yeah the panel um, it was very interesting about their thoughts and ideas of how to to move forward and and what kind of changes they might 
want to make or are already making. So yeah, it was definitely very valuable, very interesting. Um, I, as I tell people, anyone who listens, I'm like teaching on the, you know, in the classroom wasn't for me. Uh, you know, I mean, I come from the corporate background and, you know, I'm a very creative type with doing comedy and different things. And I love my marketing and things, but being a teacher in a traditional college classroom wasn't for me, which is why I opted out of it. But I, you know, it's such a very, I'm still very interested in it because I think as they're trying to make things, uh, the, you know, uh, I guess appetizing or appealing to Generation Z, there was a lot of conversation around that. Uh, I, I was talking with the chancellor from Penn State Hazleton, and I said to her, from my perspective, and I mean, I'm not looking to get back into it, but you you have so much that needs to happen, you know, to, you know, because we're not taught to, to really, how do you engage Gen Z? They're so worried about being bored, and they get, they're used to getting things at the touch of a swipe you can't just say to a teacher, okay, now do deliver that. <laughs> and it takes, you know, I'll just, I, you know, I was just saying from my own point of view, and that was part of the challenge, like engaging on that level. Um, and then also the payment, you know, as a part-time instructor, not being paid to prepare over the summer. And I said, you know, it's not really a fair ask. Um, you know, there are so many fields like ask a tree cutter or an HVAC to come and do 20 hours of work for free. They'd look at you like, huh? Um, but that what we're asking that of educators and, and she acknowledged it and said, it's, it's something that really does need to be addressed. And I know I kind of went off topic there, but like, there's so much that needs to happen. And it's just very, it's still very interesting to me, even though I don't want to be a traditional educator, so to yeah. speak. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think traditional education is really pivoting. And I think the, you know, I mentioned a couple areas that we're looking at and, and I think the timing right now is it's being accelerated by the pandemic, but it's a long time coming, right? I think, you know, this is an industry that's that's been ripe for change. Um, the technology was one part of it that the pandemic accelerated, but it's also now bringing an opportunity for a lot of other change and looking a little bit differently at the industry, both higher ed and, and K through 12. So I think it's an interesting time and something to, you know, keep a lookout for. And, um, you know, our goal is to partner all along the way as it pivots to be bringing, you know, the right opportunities, um, however, you know, however they look and whatever they look like at that time. I mean, we're, we're nimble, right? So we can change on a dime. It's a beauty of, of our business model. Um, the education industry isn't, isn't able to always do that. So that's why we love to be able to fill gaps too. You know, they identify a gap somewhere. They can't spin something up fast enough, but they can call us and we can. Um, and, and we see that as well. So, um, so just great stuff. Um, love being in the space love having your time today, Janine, and, and love having you as a partner and in, in many of the projects that we've done and as an expert in Lesson Alive. And I, I appreciate you having, having me on. Well, it's thank you. Fun. And I'm going to remove those quotes. I won't say them again. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Get rid I'm of those. An expert. Get, <laughs> that's right. And so you are. In closing where, uh, so obviously lessonalive.com, but if someone wanted to connect with you, what's the best place or should they just go through Lesson Alive? Yeah, we're, you know, we're on social media. You can find us on Facebook and, and Twitter, um, certainly the website, but you can also connect directly with me, uh, vsarah at lessonalive.com. If you want to send me an email and communicate directly, would love to hear from you um, and, and look forward to you know, ideas coming from this conversation, maybe some experts out there with some ideas for some programs or educators who, who want to do something differently this year and have some ideas as well. So I hope to uh, hear from some of the audience. Great. Well, and I want to thank you for your time. I, I haven't seen you in forever. So it was nice seeing your face on the screen here. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a great conversation as always. Like I said, even though I'm not, I'm not interested in education as a teacher per se in the traditional classroom, I do still find all of this interesting. And I think you're an educator at heart, Janine. I, I think I am, but yeah. I, I got too much frustration and it's, a, mm -hmm. it's the classroom, but I love what you yeah. said. It, it is changing. So I do like to educate in my way and to a certain audience, I guess yeah. you could say. Yeah. To, to an interested audience. That's always nice to have an audience who, who's, who's ready to hear about your topic or learn right. about it. So yeah, yeah. That's why I do find this stuff really interesting and engaging. Um, and hopefully for those of you who've listened, whether you're, you know, your parents, um, you know, if you're our teachers, if you're administrators, or you're an expert of in your field, you've been doing something for a long time professionally, definitely share it because, you know, the students can benefit from it. So check out lessonalive.com and as always, I thank you for listening. I like to say that I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart and the bottom of my wine glass.